Okay, hi you guys, my name's Kelsey. We met last week when we did the Talking Water Garden Tour. And today we're in Simpson Park in Albany, Oregon to talk about native and invasive species. Right here, we're in front of a huge blackberry patch. And um, the blackberry is what you guys would have been removing if you got to be here with us for the field trips. Unfortunately, you didn't get to, so, but we're gonna talk about why it's important to remove uh, invasive species such as the blackberry. So one of the first things I want to talk about is diversity. So when you talk about what jobs you want to have in the future, I'm sure you and your friends probably have a couple different ideas of what you'd like to be. And it's important that we all have different ideas of what we want to be when we grow up so that uh, we have a diverse uh, workforce. So um, in this example here, we have everybody with different jobs. We have a fireman, a doctor, looks like maybe some teachers. Um, and then if we're not diverse and say everybody were doctors like this, then sure we might be a healthy community because we have lots of doctors available to us. But the issue would be we wouldn't have things like teachers. We wouldn't have anybody to deliver mail or clean up garbage or to take care of our parks. And the reason that's important is because just like, uh, just like our workforce, the forests and nature work in the same way. These invasive species like the blackberry take over everything and they destroy that diversity that forests need to be healthy. In a healthy forest, you're going to see lots of plants, you're going to see a diverse assortment of bushes and trees. And um, in this example here, we have that diverse uh, forest. We have all sorts of ferns and trees and over here we have a non-diverse forest. Kind of similar to what we're seeing here, we see that ivy has taken over the forest and there's nothing else except for that ivy growing. What is an invasive species? We talk a little bit about this in the Talking Water Gardens tour, um, but we'll talk more about it now. An invasive species is any species that is not native to an area and is not naturally occurring. And it causes harm to at least one of these three things, but it can be any combination of those three things. <laughs> the economy, human health, and the environment. So here we have a couple examples of invasive species and these are very common in this area, so you've probably seen quite a few of these. And there's also other invasive species. So we have some turtles, the red-eared slider, and we sh showed you guys some of those at the tour. There's nutria, which are common here, red, shrimp, red swamp crayfish, feral pigs, Asian carp, and American bullfrogs. So in our area, we have a few common invasive plants. On this example, we have common teasel, English holly, English or Irish ivy. Um, in these areas, they're really common, and I'm sure you've probably even seen them in your neighborhood and perhaps even your yard. A lot of these invasive plants specifically came from ornamental yard decorations, so using them for like landscaping, what you put out in the garden, and they've often have spread to other areas through seeds, or even just by rooting to other new areas, and that's how they start to spread. The issue is with these plants is that they are often generalists, so when they come to these new areas, they grow rapidly because they can handle the temperatures well, and they can enjoy the environment just and do better than some of the native plants. They also destroy that diversity that we were talking about, and one of the issues is that once they start taking over, they start to suffocate the native plants for things like sunlight and nutrients, which ends up destroying those native plants. When it comes to managing invasive species, there's four main methods. The best method is prevention, and that's making sure you're aware of certain invasive species. Try not to plant them in your house or in your yard so that they can't spread. So try not to buy invasive species and encourage your family to buy native species. The other thing is when you go to a new area, cleaning off things like equipment, 
um, and your shoes so that you don't track things like seeds and pollen into new areas is very important. Um, for uh, the other methods, we have mechanical prevention or mechanical removal. Mechanical removal consists of things like mowing grass so that it doesn't seed or mowing it to the point that it's so weak that it ends up dying, pulling out plants like we would have been doing with the blackberries, and that forcible removal ends up killing them. The other type of mechanical is also fire, and that's used for plants that are uh, not heat resistant and that will eventually kill them. Um, the other aspect is biological, and this isn't as common um, as a management practice. What happens is that they release a specific predator or a disease um, causing um, animal into a certain area to attack a certain plant. Um, in this area, it was the cinnabar moth, which is a, a brown and kind of pinkish colored moth. And this moth was released to kill a uh, tansy ragwort. So it lays its eggs on there and it, the larva will eat at the plant and kill it. And the fourth method, method is chemicals. And this management practice is probably what most people think of when they think of uh, removing invasive species. Chemical would be using things like herbicides to spray down weeds. They go through and spray them down so that it kills the plant cells and they can't grow back. So what's important to talk about are native species. And there's a lot of common native species that we've seen through Simpson Park and common natives such as uh, red osier dogwood, Pacific willow, common camas, snowberry, Oregon white oak, black cottonwood, and big leaf maple. The reason that native species are important is because native plants and native animals have often grown together to rely on each other. And so we need those native species to keep other species or native plants to keep other native species around to survive. On this example, we also have the native species. If you look at the root systems, the root systems are far more spread out on the native species, which means that erosion is less likely to occur and they're going to be better at helping keep that ground solid. Whereas when invasives come in, their roots are often short or they're um, thinner than the other plants and they're going to allow erosion to occur at a more rapid pace, which can often destroy lands. Um, in this specific area, I just wanted to show you guys some of the things that we see. Here we have a uh, common tea salt. <laughs> we have some canary reed grass, and of course the blackberry that we talked about. However, we do have a couple um, native species, such as the fringe cup. We also have a native Oregon blackberry here, and it's trailing down at the bottom here. It's just a little one, and so it's important to save that over some of the bigger ones that are overtaking it that are invasive. All right, All right so we're in front of some of our native species here. We just wanted to show you guys these specifically because when the blackberry gets removed, they come out and we plant these new plants, the native plants, so that they can grow in here. And then we encourage that native plant to then continue growing. Right here, we're looking at nine bark. And nine bark is easy to identify um, because of the big round white flower patches it has on it, but also because of if you look at the branching here, you can see where it's peeling in places. And that's where the name nine bark comes from because it looks like there's maybe multiple to nine <laughs> little pieces of bark in there. All right, and here we have the Oregon grape. And Oregon grape is the state flower here. Right now it doesn't have any flowers, but you can see there's the little berries here, which is where it gets its grape name from. And it also has little points and spikes on all of the leaves. It's also very shiny as well. <laughs> all right, so the other native plant we have here is Indian plum. Uh, one of the key ways to tell this plant 
apart from others is if you break the leaves, if you take a leaf off and break it in half, it smells a lot like cucumber. Also, it's one of the first uh, plants to bloom in the spring and it gets little white flowers all over it. And here we have a ponderosa pine. These ponderosa pines get very large and you can tell them because they have these long needles. And um, the adult versions, once they start getting big enough, will develop almost puzzle piece looking bark. Um, and it's uh, really reddish colored with that black stripe kind of in the back of it. It's a really cool looking tree and it's a native here in Oregon. One other part that I wanted to make sure we all knew was the area we're in right now is a riparian zone between Cox Creek and First Lake. And this area is important and riparian zones are important because they help create biodiversity and with the native plants, the native plants helped to improve the water quality and improve healthier soils and increase um, the health of the entire ecosystem of that area. And the other important thing I wanted to remind you guys is that not all of non-native species are invasive. To be invasive, they have to harm one of the three things we mentioned before, which is the economy, the environment, and human health. All right, so that wraps up our invasive and native species. So native species have existed here for a long periods of time. They've existed here sometimes forever. They've co-evolved with animals, and so they depend upon each other to, to survive. Our invasive species come in, and they take over the area, they outcompete the native species, and destroy um, the biodiversity in the area. So I wanted to thank you guys for coming out and joining us, well, or at least watching us, and I really enjoyed teaching you guys all this stuff. So. Bye!